Hi everybody, Neckbook here, and welcome to Kaiju A Go Go. Now, I got this game recently, and I've been playing it a bit. I've played two thirds of the monsters, and so we're going to go ahead and dive right into the third one, which that is the mad scientist behind. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. Since I'm still fairly new to the game, I'm going to stick with easy for now. We'll see how you guys, if you guys want more, will go more. Now we have Shrubby, who is a plant monster. Regenerates health, but weak to fire. Um, or Gordon, which is what we're going to be playing this time. I have not played him, so I don't know much about him. I assume him to be a balance, though, between Shrubby and Genomosaurus, which is a giant robot dinosaur. I call him Mechagodzilla for short. So go ahead and do this, and with the Easter update recently, you can go ahead and stick him in a bunny suit. I figure, since they gave me free content, I'm going to use it. Oh, I actually haven't used this game. Okay. See, that's useful. Weak capacity. No, that's not bad. Cheap engineer, Vigo. Yeah, I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and shoot this thing. Strange combat processor. Which is the uh, purple tonium, I'm assuming. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. I had to guess I'm not probably going to lose you guys every load screen, but well, I'll try and edit that out with no real success probably, but I'm going to start with Lisbon. Okay, and that's the thing too, is every mad scientist starts in a different area. Shrubby starts down here moving into Dakar, and Ginormosaurus starts over here moving to Anchorage. Here we start up here, and we're going to Lisbon. Alright. And so, I have emerged. See if I could pause. And here we have Lisbon is caught by total surprise, so what that means is there's no buddy to stop me right away. I move around left click in. Can see, just start smashing, and you can also crush civilians. But now there are certain things in blue, which are tend to be unique to the area. Just the public assembly. They don't necessarily give you a lot, but they're always going to give you at least something. And there is an achievement for smashing a certain number of them, I already have it, but it's just what I do. I figure if I'm going to crush a city, I might as well crush its landmarks. Yep, that's what I thought. Another thing is, everybody has special abilities. For him it appears to be this strong, which... It's a zone around him, Shockwave, which uses both food and biomass for him. Now, Genome Sources only uses energy, and Shrubby's only uses biomass. So, it's 
not surprising that the connection between the two would use both. And now, as you continue your rampage across the city, the city's morale is going to keep going down. You cause more morale damage for destroying fleeing civilians as well. And if you get them under 40%, you have to smash that for a lot of knowledge. I'll go over the resources more after this when we get back to the uh, island screen. And now reinforcements have arrived, and the are going to get the first wave of things actually trying to stop me from smashing the city. They're not going to be very successful, but it's the plot that counts, I'm sure. Now then, so I'm just gotta get that morale. But you can see it before, but there we go. Yeah, this one kind of stamps a little bit shorter range than I'd like, but it's definitely not a bad thing to do have. Now, with things like the police stations. I honestly don't know if police stations do anything, but for example, you know how things are sort of on fire over here. Uh, I don't think I can confront this, but it's off. But with fires, fire walls, I honestly don't know if it's just in a general area or if it's citywide. I'm inclined to believe citywide just because of how it's worked for me in the past. But fire halls reduce the rate at which fire happens and spreads. So if you take those out, there will be more fire. Yeah. Makes sense. Um I don't know if police halls spawn infantry or not, because they have in the past, but things also show up from the edges of the map. Looks like so far Shrubby is the only one to have a natural healing factor. Which is problematic because this guy right here has the lowest health of any of the monsters I've dealt with. I might not be able to take Lisbon in this one go. So there are two ways you can do things. You do things like I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to here, which is you just smash the city for as much resources as you can carry and then run. Or you try to get the city morale down to uh, uh, under 40. And once it goes under 40, there's a chance every, I don't know if it's every tick or every time the morale goes down again, that the city will surrender to you. And when that happens, you get income from the city. You get a solid cash income per month. Uh, more on that during the resource section of the game. But yeah, I, I don't see myself being able to capture Lisbon, not with all the tanks around, so I'm going to book it so my monster doesn't die. That's the goal. So as you can see, I'm far enough away from the city where I'm not going to these tanks. Ah, oh, these boats. Alright, I can't talk. So yeah, we're going to run. I'm going to say yes, leaving Lisbon, and then the resources we got from raiding the city. Returns to the sea from devastating Lisbon. And so now if he's heading back, we can pull up other things. Secret base. This is where we stand. We have the base pad. I want to see what trains he has. Um, superhuman might for the increase of damage dealt with maximum health for a short time. Okay, and then he has a 10% dodge. That's pretty nice, actually. I like that. And then nuclear surge makes him faster. Well, at least he has one passive. I am very much, especially in games like this, a fan of passive abilities. Now, summary, this is the important stuff as well. Um, everything costs 
over time. The more things you build, the more your support costs are. And then you also have buildings that produce resources. In this instance, that lab and uh, fission power plants. They produce 200 power and 35 knowledge, respectively. So at the end of every month, they're going to run your support costs versus production and dock basically any discrepancies in that regard from your reserves and they're also going to give you any surplus into your reserves. Which is why taking over cities is so important. Alright, he returned. And so all the stuff that he gathered is going to flood in. Things like knowledge and money have no set storage, but power and biomatter do. So as you go, you can see it's filling up the bar here, and yet no bar is being filled here or here. Or purple tonium, I don't think. I don't think on that one. I could be wrong. Yep, we're good. Of course, with just one, it's hard to tell either way. So now that he is back, he has to heal. And then once the healing is done, I can either send him out on another thing right away, or I can train him in healing. But in these skills. So, it's getting the monthly cut, so I lost some food, I lost some cash, but nothing else happens. So that won't be able to spawn properly to a kaiju attack. What level is Seattle? Yeah, Seattle's a tier 3 city. All the colors on the flags mean different tiers, which means bigger cities are higher tier, and they have more defenses, but also more money. So, it's up to you how you want to take that. Um, like for example, Paris is a tier 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, basically. So you want to start with seizing the tier 1 cities, because with every city you actually take, the, uh, like, actually take damage you deal to it notwithstanding, you get a that's how you get your flat cash income. You cannot build a building for cash income, you have to do it that way, whereas all of these resources you can build more both storage and production facilities. So, see how it's got stuff out and won't be able to respond properly. Yes, well my kaiju isn't strong enough to deal with that either way, so it doesn't matter. Everything is finished. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and train him now on that passive dodge because he does not have the health to not be able to dodge, really. Um, now we're going to see about buildings. Um, I need this, first off. Since we're before you get your food, and that's how. So once that's built, it's going to take a drain of power and probably knowledge too. I'm not sure. Actually, I should have checked that. I can check that. Um, no, just enough keep of cash and energy, which I have enough of. So good, and it produces 100 food a month and an extra 150 food storage. So when that finishes, I will be in the green for all resources except money. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time here until, because once he finishes training, then he can go out and do stuff. So I'm going to work on the creature's reflexes. Conditioning him to respond like a warfighter in the field to have 10% chance to evade enemy attacks. That's nice. And now, he is healed and gained experience. We're going to attack a different area. We're going to attack Arcasus. He's got 50 things there. I'd say that's good. You have two options. Stealth attack makes you move slower to the process, but you have a higher chance of catching them off guard. Whereas with attack, you move faster, but he and I can see it coming more easily. Alright, it's actually complete with the organic processors. Could you go ahead and pull that up? Yep, as you can see, in the green for every draw except money. Which is why we're going to try and take your costs. That's the goal, anyway. Caracas. Sorry. Sorry, Venezuelans, I want to say. Um, it is what it is.
Alright, caught by total surprise, which was the goal. And we're gonna continue smashing our way through. Punch, punch, punch. Resources you can move from here. Some of them are rarer than others and only show up in certain building types. One of the rare being knowledge. Granted, this guy does not have a very high capacity for that compared to the others, but knowledge can be got from a few places. Occasionally from central banks, from universities and colleges like we just saw, and also from the medical centers over here. Um, it also lets me get over to that fire station. Um, I'm talking like I'm an expert at the game, but literally I just had three hours of experience playing monsters that aren't this one. So, I'm not sure how much of an authority I really am, but... Uh, and... Gotta take care of that. Smash that. And... Uh, keep moving so we can take out the first precincts. Open. The gas station spreading like fire everywhere. Which I'm also currently doing with my feet. My bunny feet. I guess if I can stick him in a bunny costume, you can add him in a stick in a bunny costume. And yeah, as you can see, it just spawned some infantry there. Which I was able to stomp in short order, but still. But it's still an inconvenience. Okay. We keep moving. There's a university there that I'm going to want to smash. But there's also the dynamos. Yeah, that's what the remaining landmark is. We're going to go right there. Actually, we're going to hit the central bank first. On the second plot. Resources already. At this point, it would either be wise to do one of two things. We're going to try for the latter, especially with how unsupported this place is. Is the wise thing to do would either be run, since I have all the resources and smashing the rest of the town won't get me any more that I can take with me, or I can keep going to try and get the morale back. I'm going to do that just because I'm very much a fan of being self sufficient. And in order to do that, like, I like to win the green on all of my resources all the time, basically. And in order to do that, you need to take over cities. target things as it's blinking, but I don't have any ranged abilities, so that doesn't really help me any. I don't think, like, I'm basically doing this on the off chance that it'll increase the odds that my guy will try to swat it out of the sky. Will it work? I have no idea. I hope it does, but I have no clue if it will. keep on smacking things until the morale drops enough. That's the goal anyway. Oh cool. Yeah, that's the other nice thing about fighters is they're harder to hit, sure. But well when you smack them, they explode, and if they land right, they take out other areas. So I'm continuing my 
each town. They also have nice things like how much of the city you destroyed over there. My rampage of monstrosity carries on. I'm just gonna ignore the cities because I'm barely faster than them, so trying to run them down will only slow my progress. Nice thing is, is a lot of the uh, enemies, particularly the vehicles, are limited to the roads. So, for example, that one can't get me, and he needs to find a workaround in the roads that will take him all the way over to where I am. Very useful for dodging damage, which is necessary. We're really not seeing that 10% dodge chance, not gonna lie. Just, just really not seeing it. It'd be nice if it popped up more, but yeah, the random generator just random number generator just hates me, that's all. <sighs> Downtown is over there. So, there I go. Okay, there's a bit of a dodge there, but. Yeah. As you can see, walking out of range does quite well for not getting shot. Turn, but the morale here is significantly lower already. Same around the pump. There we go. Let's walk the turn down the That's the only thing that points is it's so hard to like guess where it is. Oh, 
how we go. Yes, I know it's good fun. Sky get that, and in addition, you get awarded the key to the city. Like you do. Now I get 52k a month from owning this city. And I also get an extra 107 power. Like this kind of all that they don't ask for. So now you can see it's got a monument to me on the map. Like I said, home. Same help. It's gonna take forever for him to recover, but now, pull over here, you can see I'm in the green with all my resources, and that's really what I wanted out of this, so. I'm gonna go over to training. How much victory is this gonna be? I think that's doable. If not, when he heals, I can send him out on another raid. So now we're gonna go ahead and go here. And with the arrival loot. Go ahead and give me all that stuff. So now, if I go to secret base, yeah, he has to heal. He heals fairly quickly, all things considered, but he doesn't have much health to heal. But we're gonna go ahead and train him. We're gonna go ahead and give him the uh, nuclear surge. When he uses it, he's gonna move 10% faster, and he's also going to attack 10% faster. This is really just while I wait for the advanced training to be complete. So when that finishes, that's training, new Kaiju release are available. Basically what happens is now, from all of these, if you have them researched, you get three new ones. Body armor, which I'm gonna want. Um, an active personal shield that absorbs damage, gives damage and then more dodging. But I think this is a good time to end the episode, guys, so if you like this, let me know. See you guys doing this more and starting on the next uh, attack. Alright, see you guys later. Bye.